All news. All for Texas. This is Texas News Radio. I'm Dennis Foley. Coming up, your help is needed to raise money for the largest Thanksgiving dinner of the country right here in San Antonio. The city of Austin responds to the governor's homelessness concern with a new camping policy. Wait till you hear what James Bond got cooking for Christmas. I'm Deborah Rodriguez. It's the Weather Service's annual winter forecast. I'm Jim Shenevy. This is Texas News Radio from 550 KTSA and FM 1071. KTSA is helping raise money for the Raul Jimenez Thanksgiving dinner, which feeds about 25,000 people in San Antonio every year. Patricia Jimenez says it's a feast of the heart. A homeless individual, he had his uh, sleeping bag stolen, and it was kind of cold, so to keep warm, he was just walking around, and he said he couldn't wait till the doors opened so he could come to the dinner. You can make a donation during the KTSA Radiothon on our website at KTSA.com. A firefighter killed in line of duty this week will be laid to rest Thursday. The San Antonio Fire Department says a public visit and prayer vigil for Greg Garza will be at Porter Loring Mortuary in McCullough at 5 o'clock Wednesday afternoon. Then Thursday, a funeral procession and honor walk through downtown. Garza's funeral will be held at noon at Community Bible Church, but it will not be open to the public. Garza is a 17, well, is a 17-year San Antonio Fire Department veteran. He was killed Tuesday morning. He was struck by a van while responding to a fire call at a hotel near the downtown area. Energy Secretary Rick Perry is clearing the air on why he's stepping down at the end of the year. The former Texas governor tells Fox News his resignation is not related to the Trump administration's controversy with Ukraine. It has absolutely nothing to do with Ukraine. It has everything to do with, for the last eight or nine months, I have... I, I've been looking back to Texas on a pretty regular basis to uh, round top Texas, my wife, my dogs, and and, and kind of going on to the next adventure in life. When Houston Rockets general manager Daryl Morey tweeted his support for Hong Kong's pro-democracy movement two weeks ago, the Chinese government was so angry that it demanded Morey be fired. At the Time 100 Health Summit last night, NBA Commissioner Adam Silver made his first public comments about the Daryl Morey controversy, acknowledging that China's harsh response has cut into league revenues. The losses have already already been substantial. Our games are not back on the air in China as we speak, and we'll see what happens next. At the same time, Silver says that on free speech principles, he never considered terminating Mori over the pro-Hong Kong tweet. Jim Ryan, ABC News. KTSA AccuWeather. Mainly clear tonight, turning more humid, a low of 66. Very warm and humid tomorrow, partly sunny, high 90. Mainly clear tomorrow night, low 60 in the hill country, 69 along the Riverwalk. Hot, humid weather on Sunday. Partial sunshine, high 91. Thunderstorms are likely Sunday night. Recap, mainly clear today, low 66. This is meteorologist Bob Larson with your KTSA Stephen Trufik. Accu weather forecast. The Austin City Council has partially reinstated its public camping ban after Governor Greg Abbott had threatened to use state resources to address the city's growing homelessness problem. The new ban prevents people from camping on sidewalks in front of homeless shelters in central Austin or in areas with a high risk of wildfires. The governor's office said the city has taken a meaningful step to address the issue. However, the state will continue to watch how well the new policy addresses the skyrocketing public safety complaints. Additionally, the office said TxDOT will work with DPS, Austin Police, and the University of Texas to clear homeless camps under bridges. The San Antonio City Council has approved nearly $129,000 to develop a plan for addressing homelessness there. Councilman Clayton Perry questioned why the city is bringing in a consultant from California to develop a plan to deal with homelessness in San Antonio. They might have a broad perspective on issues with homelessness, but they don't know San Antonio. Melody Woosley is director of the city's Department of Human Services. We believe that they have the experience in the trenches um, where homelessness has gotten completely out of control to help us identify the things that we can do to prevent that from happening. Elizabeth Ruiz, KTSA News. While Mexican drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman is behind bars after being convicted of drug trafficking and murder in federal court in New York, U.S. law enforcement authorities were looking for his son. He was arrested this week in Mexico, but released shortly after. How threatening are drug cartels to peace in Mexico? Well, Mexican officials released the son of notorious drug lord Joaquin El Chapo Guzman on Thursday after he was arrested. They said they did so to protect lives after cartel gunmen turned the city of Culiacan into a virtual war zone when he was taken into custody. Ovidio Guzman Lopez is wanted in the U.S. on drug trafficking charges. The Mexican National Guard and Army raided a house 
in Khan, where he was staying and arrested him. Soon after, roads were blocked and gun battles broke out across the city. I'm Steve Kastenbaum. The number of Americans who call themselves Christians is declining while the number of non-religious people increases. A Pew Research Center study out this week found 65% of Americans describe themselves as Christian. That's down 12% over the previous decade. The number of people who said they were atheist, agnostic, or nothing in particular grew from 17% in 2009 to 26% this year. The study also found that the number of people who attend religious services at least once a month dropped from 52% 10 years ago to 45%. Lisa Carter, NBC News Radio. This is Texas News Radio. I'm James Pledger, and the Astros are on the brink of going to the World Series after taking a commanding 3-1 lead with an 8-3 win last night in Game 4 up in the Bronx. Game 5 is tonight from Yankee Stadium with first pitch set for 6.08 as Justin Verlander gets the start for Houston while the Yankees counter with James Paxton. The Yankees will be getting Giancarlo Stanton back for tonight's game as he'll be in the DH and back cleanup after missing the last three games with a quad injury. In the NFL on Sunday, it's going to be a battle for division leads for our Texas teams, both of which you can catch right here on ESPN San Antonio. First up at noon, the Texans take on the Colts in Indy as Houston is 4-2 while Indy is 3-2 with both coming off wins over the Chiefs up in Kansas City. While later that night, the Cowboys and Eagles, who are both 3-3, meet in Arlington on Sunday night football for sole possession of first place in the NFC East. Kickoff of that game set for 7:20, and as always, you can catch it right here on your home for everything Cowboys, ESPN San Antonio. Amari Cooper is officially listed as questionable after being limited during practice. In college football action tomorrow, the Texas Tech Red Raiders take on Iowa State tomorrow morning at 11 up in Lubbock, a game you can catch right here on your home for the Red Raiders, starting at 10 with the pregame. 15th-ranked Texas looks to bounce back from their loss to OU as they take on the Kansas Jayhawks at 6. Texas A&M will be in Oxford to take on Ole Miss with kickoff set for 6.30 tomorrow night, a game you can catch over on our brother station, 550 KTSA and FM 107.1. UTSA will take on Rice in the Alamo Dome at 5 tomorrow, and Incarnate Word takes on Lamar at 4. In the NBA, the Spurs close out the preseason tonight as they take on the Memphis Grizzlies here at the AT&T Center with tip-off set for 7.30 this evening. Finally in soccer, San Antonio FC will take on Colorado Springs tomorrow night at 7.30 here out at Toyota Field. I'm James Pledger for ESPN San Antonio. A man shot another man. He witnessed slashing his tires this morning. San Antonio police say the 23-year-old man had an ongoing issue with a 31-year-old man. They say the younger man spotted the other slashing his tires in the area of West Avenue and Blanco Road at around 1120. He confronted that slasher and escalated to the shooting. The slasher was uh, taken to an area hospital where he was listed in critical condition. The shooter was taken into police headquarters and is cooperating with the investigation, which is ongoing. This talk show host is backpedaling after she allegedly made a comment during a taped segment of her show this week. Tamron Hall, talk show host, drug dealer. She reportedly admitted on her talk show this week that she helped facilitate the sale of cocaine as a teenager with her college boyfriend. In a statement, she says she never dealt drugs, but admits a segment of her show was edited out due to legal reasons of what she said. She says she shared a story about a, quote, bad situation I got myself into when I was 19, but I never dealt drugs. As a nearly 50-year-old, she says, I'm reflecting on a bad judgment call that could have turned worse. Matt Piper, CBS News. The Weather Service is out with its winter forecast. The Weather Service has issued its annual winter forecast, and meteorologist Mike Halpert says the global forces that drive the weather are expected to be weak. When you get that type of a, of a winter, what we oftentimes see are pretty significant swings during the winter. Then trying to, to figure out or, or ascribe what the net outcome is becomes um, fairly tricky to do that. Halpert says there's a slight chance for warmer than normal weather across much of the United States. Jim Shanavy, CBS News. A San Francisco-based startup is getting ready to test autonomous electric scooters. The founders of Tortoise say their self-driving e-scooters have the technology to pick up riders and dock themselves at charging stations. They maintain their two-wheelers are self-sufficient and will not clutter the streets. They'll begin testing next month in a suburb of Atlanta and hope to eventually launch Tortoise in California. Phil Hewlett, NBC News Radio. KTSA Money News. 
Bad days for Boeing and Johnson & Johnson weighed on the stock market. The Dow lost 255 points to 26,770. The Nasdaq fell 67 points to 80.89. The S&P fell 11 points to 29.86. Boeing shares sank on reports it may have misled the FAA in 2016 about the safety of the 737 MAX before deadly crashes in Indonesia and Ethiopia over the past year. Johnson & Johnson recalled a single lot of baby powder after the FDA discovered a trace sample of its best and a single bottle purchased online. Jason Brooks, CBS News. The news never stops. This is Texas News Radio. Hillary Clinton thinks Russia is actively plotting more interference in the 2020 election. Speaking on former Obama campaign manager David Fluff's podcast, Clinton suggested that Russia has some dirt on President Donald Trump and is planning to quietly back a third candidate, a third party candidate, to siphon votes from Democrats. She said she thinks Russia has their eye on someone who's currently in the Democratic presidential race and is grooming her to be the third party candidate. She's insinuating that person is Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. President Trump is praising the first all-female spacewalk today. The president mistaking his facts as he congratulated two women astronauts making their spacewalk today. This is the first time for a woman outside of the space station. Actually, women have made spacewalks since the 1980s, including 12 American women. The president meant to say this was the first all-woman spacewalk. They are repairing batteries on the International Space Station. Andy Field, ABC News, Washington. The administration is declaring victory after Vice President Mike Pence achieved an agreement with Turkey aimed at temporarily stopping the fighting in northern Syria, but some in Capitol Hill had a more skeptical take. Vice President Pence hailed it as a victory. All military operations under Operation Peace Spring will be paused. But Republican Senator Mitt Romney says the agreement gave Turkey everything they wanted. The announcement today is being portrayed as a victory. It is far from a victory. Romney is now calling for public hearings about why the administration didn't negotiate an agreement with Turkey before abandoning the Kurds. Jordan Phelps, ABC News, Capitol Hill. It's no trick. If you wait much longer to book Thanksgiving flights, you won't get much of a treat. All right, Halloween still isn't for another week. But if you are planning to fly somewhere over the holidays, you better book those flights now. I'm not saying it's too late, but it's time to get serious about it. And if you see a fare that looks good to you at this point, just take it. Summer Hall, director of travel with the website, The Points Guy. We're close enough in now, especially for Thanksgiving travel, that my advice is just don't get greedy. If it looks fair, it's a good time to lock it in. Hall says you have a little more time if you want to book a flight for Christmas travel or maybe for New Year's travel, but not much more. Daria Albinger, ABC News. This is Texas News Radio. CBS Eye on Veterans from ConnectingVets.com. Recently, we spoke with Mr. Chris Pugh, the head recruiter for the U.S. Army Cyber Command, and he has a message for vets. If you are a former SIGINT or your former hands on operator, if you've went out to places like Google and gotten your hands into the mix, call me, man. There's no reason why you should be sitting on the sideline right now. We need you. You have to think about your future and what you want to do. But the one thing that I can offer that no tech company can offer is I can put you inside the offensive operation battlefield. Nobody can put you in offensive cyber operations except for the U.S. Army Cyber Command. I'm Phil Briggs from ConnectingVets.com for CBS News. I'm Anthony Mason with Gail King and Tony DeCopo. A trooper in Utah rushed into harm's way to save a man's life with just seconds to spare. Dramatic dash cam video shows trooper Ruben Correa running toward a car stranded on railroad tracks. He then scrambles to pull out the driver who is unconscious just as a train barrels toward them. Our lead national correspondent, David Begno, is here with the incredible rescue. David, how did the man get stuck? The good news story of the morning, Anthony. Turns out he had a medical emergency, loses control of his vehicle, crashes through a fence, and winds up stuck on the tracks. The trooper is nearby on another call. He gets the call to head to the scene. It was just after 6.50 a.m. Wednesday morning. Highway Patrol Trooper Ruben Correa pulled up to the scene where the SUV was stuck on the railroad tracks. That train was coming pretty fast. So at that point, I actually wasn't really thinking. I was just doing my job, and uh, the main concern was getting him out. He ran toward the SUV with his flashlight on, believing the driver was still inside. He would have just 35 seconds to get the man out. Let's go. Get out of here. We got a train coming. We got a train coming. We got a train coming. 
He did it with less than two seconds to spare. The car flew through the air as the train bulldozed down the track. I got worried after I saw the, the train hit the, hit the vehicle, and the vehicle flew about 30 feet in front of us, and that's when I realized, oh, wow, that was, was a lot closer than what I would have liked. That was the aftermath. The driver told the state trooper he is just grateful to be alive. I'm still trying to process everything that happened. Uh, I'm just very grateful that I was able to get him out, and he's alive, and he's back with his family now. The trooper's only been on the force for about a year and a half. The driver told the state police he is okay. He's in his 20s, and he said, I don't want to talk to the media. Don't want to be named. And you know what? That is okay. KTSA Entertainment. Beverly Hills 90210 star Tori Spelling says that if her revival show gets picked up for a second season, she knows what fans want. Spelling tells E.T., quote, we really want to do it, and we're figuring it out with Fox. Big Bang Theory star Kelly Coco says starting her new series, The Flight Attendant, right away was smart because she didn't have time to think about it. Cuoco also created the HBO Max series and will serve as its executive producer. Celebrating an E.T. birthday today, actor Zac Efron is 32, action star Jean-Claude Van Damme is 59, and which Gilligan's Island Castaway earned the title of Miss Nevada after competing in the Miss America pageant. That would be Dawn Marianne Wells, who today turns 81. This report brought to you by CBS Audio. For more entertainment, news, sports, and lifestyle features, go to cbsaudio.com forward slash podcast and explore all that CBS Audio has to offer. From the Entertainment Tonight newsroom in Hollywood, I'm Kevin Frazier. Cancer concerns leads the makers of Zantac to recall the popular heartburn drug. After major retailers and pharmacy chains, including Walmart, CVS, and Rite Aid, suspended the sale of Zantac and generic versions, now its maker, the French company Sanofi, is recalling the over-the-counter heartburn medication because of concern over possible contamination with a potentially cancer-causing substance called NDMA. U.S. and European regulators were notified by an online pharmacy about it, and testing by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration backed that up. That's ABC's Chuck Sievertson. Kellogg's is putting some of its most popular cereals in the same box to support an anti-bullying campaign. Altogether, cereal will include corn flakes, Fruit Loops, Frosted Flakes, Frosted Mini Wheats, Raisin Bran and Rice Krispies packaged individually in the same box. The company is partnering with the Gay and Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation to support its anti-bullying work. The longest, uh, the world's longest non-stop flight takes to the sky tonight. Today, and welcome to Qantas. It's never been done before, but one Australian Airlines is ready to give it a go. The world's first 20-hour flight from New York to Sydney. Now, Qantas says the flight will serve primarily as a data-gathering mission. A team of researchers will be on board and on the ground monitoring passengers to determine how both they and the crew can withstand the marathon journey. No airline has ever completed this route, although Airbus and Boeing are developing planes with such capacity. The flight's scheduled to leave JFK 9 p.m. tonight, arriving in Sydney just after 7 a.m. Sunday morning using the Boeing 787-9 Dreamliner. Todd Ant, ABC News, New York. If you find yourself with some downtime this weekend, you could always curl up and holiday shop. The name's Bond. James Bond. The Neiman Marcus Christmas catalog is just out, and the top luxury item is an inky blue Aston Martin DBS Super Legera, designed by the latest Bond, Daniel Craig. <laughs> the price tag, enough to make you lose control, $700,000. For $575,000, you can take a private jet to the Casbah, Italy's Dolomites, and the Ice Hotel in Sweden. Two hundred fifty grand gets you front row seats to four of New York City's Fashion Week shows and a meet and greet with the designers. Deborah Rod- Rodriguez, CBS News. KTSA AccuWeather. Mostly clear tonight, not as cool as recent nights, low 66, and noticeably warmer tomorrow, partly sunny, high 90. Mainly clear tomorrow night, low 60 in outlying areas, just 69 of the city. Very warm and humid on Sunday, a mix of clouds and sun to high 91. The record is 92. To recap, mainly clear tonight, low 66. This is meteorologist Bob Larson with their KTSA Stephen Trufik AccuWeather Forecast. Texas News Radio is a production of 550 KTSA and FM 1071. Get news anytime online and stay connected at KTSA.com.